Hey everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood, Uncle Pete here, and this is the series that my friend Carl and I created, where we go through a year of horror movies and we pick out our horror movie superlatives, selecting a film for each one of these categories. Most amazing, best so bad it's good, most WTF, best gore, most unique, most overrated, and most underrated. So, it's a lot of fun. We've already done this for the 1970s, 80s, and 90s. I'll have a car over here for check those out. We're, do, we're tackling the 2000s these upcoming weeks. And we do use Letterboxd to see what list of horror movies uh, came out that year. So, just like with our debate series, what you can do is, after you watch my video, you can go to Carl's video and link in the description down below. And watch his video on the same title. And then if you'd like, you can go to the community tab on his page and vote for who you thought had the better picks. And that's also a tie option. And most important, let us know what your picks are in the comments down below. We love reading comments, love responding, love talking horror with fellow horror fans. Really much appreciated. Also, if you can do us both a favor, take a quick second, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. It's free for you. Really helps us out a lot. Keep us motivated putting out all the content that we do because it's... It's a lot of fun to do so. So, let's get started, and we're going to pick out some horror movie superlatives for 2003. My pick for the most amazing horror film, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. Yeah, it's a controversial pick, but remember, preferences shape us. We embrace what resonates with us and reject what doesn't. I think the world would be a pretty boring place if we all shared the same opinions on stuff. But, yeah, I do, I do love this movie, and if you hate it, okay, great, but... I do love this movie. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not better than the original. But if I'm ranking all the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films, this one is going to be in my top three, probably. I just really do enjoy it. Maybe top four. I remember watching this one for the first time. You know, I just got at home after working overnight while I was a drone instructor in the Navy. And I put this movie on and I was so much into it. I was just taken in. It. I really enjoyed what Marcus Nisbell, um, I enjoyed his version of the 1974 classic. I thought Jessica Biel was excellent. She portrayed terrified and badass and doing it really well. I have to mention um, R. Lee Ermey, he was over the top evil and that's commonly what he is with his characters and it really did work for this film. He was a sadistic son of a bitch and damn he was really good in his role. This version of Leatherface was pay, uh, played by Andrew Bernarski. Um, he was never timid or like screaming at stuff um, like you see in some of the earlier versions of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This version is just an evil, evil son of a bitch. Um, they changed this movie enough to make it its own vision while still, you know, paying respect and homage to the original from 1974. The kills were brutal and unforgiving. It felt like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film, which is more than I can say for some of the later entries in the franchise. You know, some movies just strike a chord with viewers. You know, certain things speak to us that make us really like or dislike. I believe this is a well-made movie. The cinematography is great. Acting, writing, kills, and all the aspects they change as a remake, I think that worked for me. And I'm not ashamed to say that I love this film and it's my pick for the most amazing horror film of 2003. For Best So Bad It's Good, I selected Beyond Reanimator. Now, Reanimator is one of the greatest horror films to come out in the 80s. It's it's a classic for sure. Broader Reanimator wasn't nearly as good as the original, but it's still a decent movie. Now, unfortunately, the quality of the films in this franchise has dipped You know, as you get later on. However, there's some very entertaining aspects with Beyond Reanimator. We do get the return of Dr. Herbert West, played by Jeffrey Combs. I mean, it's it's his role. Um, he dialed the camp factor even more for this one. You can tell he's kind of having fun with this. Now, I will say the dubbing in this movie is kind of weird since this was a co-production with Spain. So some of the characters' voices, they look dubbed. That's a little, a little off-putting sometimes. But you do get used to it. But just know that it's noticeable. But if you haven't seen this film, Dr. West is in prison now. And he has a new technique for reanimating the dead. The cast of characters are wacky, and you can tell this is a lower-budget movie since it did debut on the Sci-Fi Channel, but it's it's worth the watch. The special effects are over-the-top and silly, again, adding to the charm of this movie. It really wasn't scary. It's more fun and goofy with some of the special effects, especially towards the end. 
Um, Doctor West, he's the star of this movie. I mean, it's Jeffrey Combs. Even but when he, and you can tell when he's not on screen because it, it kind of gets a little dull. Like you're only you're watching this for Doctor West. Um, and it's hard to tell when some of the performances that they're trying to play serious or if they're in on the joke with being silly. That's a little weird, but I think it adds to the so bad it's good camp factor of this movie. Now, the ending of this movie is wild. Not Now, not entertaining as the two predecessors, but the ending in this movie in the prison, everything that happens, I think it's a great example of what you expect from a so bad it's good movie like Street Trash or Troll 2 or Chud. Movies like that. That's what you're going to get. So, if you like over-the-top performances, absurd plots, cheesy dialogue... Goofy special effects, such as a rat boxing with the severed penis. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That happens. So, um, then you, if you like all that stuff, you maybe you'll agree with me and see why I picked it for best so bad it's good film of 2003. My pick for the most WTF film goes to House of a Thousand Corpses. I remember seeing this movie in a the theater with MJ when we first started dating. I actually picked it for us to go see. Yeah, she wasn't too happy with me since she's not a big fan of horror movies and she hated this film. And she was kind of shocked how her boyfriend actually enjoyed this film so much. I'm lucky she's still married to me after 20 years. This is your typical Rob Zombie horror film, and I do enjoy most of his flicks. Except for the monsters, but this one is far from any type of monsters type film. This is m way more in line with all his other films. It's filled with vulgarity, gore, violence, torture, blood, and even more. It was the first film that Rob Zombie did direct. Before this, he directed music videos. And watching this movie, it does feel like one very long heavy metal music video. You even have snippets of his wife, Sherry Moon Zombie, dancing to some metal music with like skeletons and like bodies and stuff. It feels like a like a music video. Um, not my favorite film in the Firefly trilogy, but I still like it. It's for it's very enjoyable. I can enjoy this movie a lot. Um, lots of similarities to Texas Chainsaw Massacre in this film. And here you got one twisted effed up family and Rob Zombie is great at showing you twisted effed up sick people doing horrific things there are a few times in his movie when you can go WTF there's one part where Walter Goggins character Officer Nash uh, he's about to be killed by Otis he's on his knees with Otis standing over him holding a gun at his head the camera pulls back to a wide shot and then there's barely any sound and the scene goes on and on and on you actually think for a second did my video freeze but it's just slowly panning out then after about 30 seconds of silence, boom, Otis kills him. He's like, what WTF? What the heck was that about? That's just one example of WTF in a movie. A lot of the kills and what they do to Rain Wilson's character gets WTF. And just the scenes of like torture and bodies in the house. It's like, ugh, ugh, what the F is going on? Yep. And that's why I think House of a Thousand Corpses was a great selection for the most WTF movie of 2003. My pick for best gore goes to Final Destination Part 2. The opening in this movie is by far the best of the franchise. Because of this movie, how many people will never travel on a highway behind a large truck carrying logs? The accident is just brutal and unforgiving, and out of all the opening strategies uh, in the Final Destination films, this one feels the most likely to occur, and that really adds to the impact and the scare factor that it has on you. Once the logs fall off the truck, its carnage is not let up, the police officer decapitated when a log flies through his truck, blood and guts explode out of the back of the car, cars explode from the impact crashes, one guy is burned alive, we, we just gotta watch. And that's all just in the first few minutes of the movie. Mostly done with practical effects with a few enhancements here and there, like the actual logs falling off the back of the truck. Later on uh, in the movie, the ladder on the fire escape goes right through Evan's head. Tim is flattened by a large plate of glass that falls on him. Again, practical effects for these kills. Nora has her head ripped off after it gets stuck in an elevator. Rory's cut to pieces um, when some barbed wire fence goes through him. It's just a lot of fun. Lots of fun, gory deaths in this movie. Inventive kills. Yeah, pretty easy with this one. Final Destination Part 2, best gore. For most unique, I went with Identity. This is such a good movie. Uh, I probably could have picked it for most amazing as well. It's just, it's that good. But, yeah, another pick in my most unique category with a line between reality and imagination is very thin in the film. This is a classic whodunit set-up type movie where ten strangers are stranded at a remote motel during a storm, only to be killed off one by one. However, the twist of the movie is the entire scenario is the manifestation of a character's multiple personalities. 
this is a twist I don't think anybody really saw coming. You know, Identity, it's a psychological thriller that has, you know, an eclectic group of characters. You know, these multiple personalities. The whodunit theme throughout keeps you on the edge while you're trying to figure out, you know, who the killer is. And I think it's a smart movie where it keeps the audience engaged with its clever dialogue, interesting characters, and like a film noir atmosphere. This film was unlike other horror films that came out in 2003. Like my other, some other my some of my other most unique picks. Um, the film doesn't have explicit gore or violence yet. It's still a very entertaining thriller. Another use, uh, unique aspect of this film is that the twist invites you to kind of rewatch the film with a new perspective, where you can appreciate clues and misdirections you may have missed for the first time. That kind of reminded me of Fight Club and Sixth Sense. You know, you're going to rewatch those films and like, oh, I can't believe I missed that. I should have picked up on that. You know, the genres of those films are a little bit different, but these films want to make you watch the film again, even though you know the ending. And I think that's very unique when a horror film unites you to watch a film again. So you can see, experience a film in a different way and see how that film tricked you. And Identity is a great, um, great example of that, which is why I picked it for my most unique selection. My pick for most overrated goes to Freddy vs. Jason. Now, it may be a stretch calling this film overrated since it really has to be loved. So that might be a tough argument to win. But I think with the hype that was surrounding this movie before it was released was something special. You really hadn't seen anything like that. You had place your best websites where you can bet on who you thought would win. There were talk shows, interviews with Robert England and um, I think it was Ken Kersinger um, behind the mask for Jason. I don't know if he did the interviews, but you know, you get my point. It was websites, all kinds of trailers and everything. Lots of marketing when the internet was nowhere near as it was big today. And my feeling is this movie, it didn't live up to that hype. That's kind of why I'm leaning towards making it overrated because there was so much nonsense in the plot such as Jason is scared of water. I, that made no sense. All the characters were vapid and dull. I didn't care about any of them. They just filled every trope of character you've seen in the horror movies and said, okay, let's get this character. Let's get that character. It was just very lazy writing. And I'll admit, Freddy letting Jason out of hell and put him in Springwood so he can kill and allow fear to build back up, that was kind of good. But after we learned that, it just fell apart from there. The ending fight scene is good. But it be kind of it does feel a little bit contrived and more slapstick action than a horror movie. It it really did feel like a Looney Tunes fight at 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 some point. And it's just the movie didn't live up to its hype. There's so much potential for this film. I don't know the script that got left on the cutting room floor, but I, this is the one that won. But I just think it failed on many levels, resulting in it as my selection for most overrated horror film and one that never really lived up to the hype. Ending with most underrated, and I picked Dead End. I wish more people talked about this underrated Christmas movie. It does star Ray Wise and Lynn Shay. Now, if you haven't seen this movie, definitely check it out. It's about a family traveling to a relative's house on Christmas Eve. The dad decides to take a shortcut off the main highway to save time. That's never a good option, and it's not a good option here. So, they get stuck in a never-ending deserted road, and this movie's plot kind of keeps you guessing to the end. You're trying to figure out what is really going on. One by one, the family members start experiencing like deadly instances, and it kind of involves this sinister black car that keeps appearing out of nowhere. I don't want to give anything else away, not wanting to spoil this movie, but the performance is very, very well done. You know, for a movie that takes a large percentage of the time is in a car, it's shot very well. And you feel like you're in the car with them, it's actually moving on a road. Yeah, it's just done well. The tension in this film kind of gives you a claustrophobic feel as well because they spend so much time in that car. Now, how many of us have been stuck in a car on a long road trip to a destination where that we don't want to go to? We just didn't want to be there. It kind of builds on that great entertaining movie. So if you like that type of stuff, I think you'll enjoy this movie. Check it out because it's a very underrated Christmas horror movie. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are all my horror movies and for 2003. Let's quick recap of my picks. Now, don't forget to let Carl and I what your picks are in the comments down below. And if you haven't done so already, please go to Carl's channel, link in the description, watch his video with the same name. Then you're going to go to the mini tab on his page and vote for who you thought had the better picks. There's also a tie option. Let us know what you feel. Great. 
See you here in two weeks for some more horror movies and pro tips. Where Carl and I tackle all the horror movies released for 2004. Thanks again, everybody. Please like, comment, share, subscribe on both of our channels. We put a lot of good content in out. It's free entertainment. Help us out. Subscribe button. Thanks. Until next time, I am your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete. And remember, with great kills, there must also come great nails.